I, I can't explain it. It's been a, uh, a lot of ups and downs, and see, this, this is sweet. I don't know. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I just can't believe it. It's, uh, I'm speechless. It's unbelievable. It was hard, but you know what? It was a lot of fun, too. Tell you what, this is sweet. Not an emotional person that way, but I am actually tearing up. Ooh, it feels great, I must say. Uh... <laughs> We've come past 100 subscribers. Thank you. It means so much. Jokes aside, thank you if you have subscribed. I never really expected to get 100 subscribers. I know it's not a huge number compared to some people, but I do appreciate it. If you're watching and you like the videos that I've made before and you haven't subscribed, then please do. Um, obviously, if you have, then you're a champion. Keep doing what you're doing. weeks actually since I last posted a video. Um, don't worry, it's not that the fame has gone to my head. There's been a few reasons really that I haven't posted a video. There's been a few technical issues, um, the main one being that my cheapo tripod from China inevitably snapped in half. It's been so windy that it's been difficult to record anything outside without all you're hearing is the wind noise. I've been quite busy and to be honest I've been playing a bit crap. And when that happens, I kind of feel like I've got less to share with you. Obviously, you know, if I've made a big step forward and my steps are scratched, then that's great and it's a video and I want to share that. But if things aren't going well, I'm a bit less inclined to make a video. And also it means that I want to spend as much time as I can practicing to change what's going wrong and make sure that I am moving forward rather than spending my time making a video. But this video is about how I know that I will get to scratch. And it was a video that I was going to make a few weeks ago when I was playing great and everything was going really well and I was shooting the best scores of my life. Um, I just didn't get around to it at the time. But actually, in a way, it's kind of fitting that I'm making it now when things aren't going so well. I know a lot of people think that I'll never get to scratch. I ran a poll on Twitter about a month ago asking people if they thought I would or wouldn't get to scratch. And about a third of people said that I wouldn't make it. Shocker. Shocker. What a huge mistake that is. No, I'm only joking. To be honest, I thought that would actually be a higher percentage of the answers. If you don't think I'm going to make it, that's absolutely fine. I'm not at all offended and I can understand why you would think that. Getting to scratch isn't easy. I've seen various different statistics, but I think about 0.5% of golfers play off scratch. At my club, I think there's two scratch golfers out of about 600 members. So that works out about right. Let's face it, most people who play golf would like to get to scratch and the vast, vast majority never make it. And there's no shame in that. Golf's not easy, getting scratch is hard. But there's three main reasons why I know I'm gonna to get to scratch. Number one, maybe I won't do that for number two, number three is a bit weird. Um, first reason is that I know I'm capable of playing par golf or better. In the last few months, I've played nine holes in par or a few shots under par quite a few times. I've birdied every hole on my course and I've eagled quite a few of them. I know it's not as simple as that. There are 22 handicappers out there who've birdied every hole on their course, and they're not expecting to get to scratch. But my point is that from a mathematical or scientific point of view, I know I'm physically capable of playing golf that would get me to a scratch handicap. I'm quite a big fan of looking at the evidence. So for example, if my goal was to, um, I don't know, fly to the moon unaided just by flapping my arms really fast, you'd look at the evidence and suggest that there's not a very good chance that I'm gonna succeed in that goal. I really hope none of the neighbors saw me doing that. Whereas when it comes to getting to scratch, the evidence would suggest that I'm capable of doing it. I'm fully capable of shooting par golf or under par golf. And whilst I realize that even one round of under par doesn't make you a scratch golfer, it shows that, you know, I can do it. It's just a case of doing it regularly in qualifying competitions. Reason number two. The second reason is that despite the fact I've had a bit of a rough few weeks on the golf course, my game is progressing. When I started this project around about a year ago, my average score was in the sort of mid to high 80s and a really good round was in the high 70s. My average score now is sort of more mid to high 70s 
with really good rounds being one or two over and bad rounds tend to be sort of around 80, low 80s. So I'm getting better. Obviously I'm not there yet. I'm not professing to say that I'm good enough to be a scratch golfer. I'm not yet. I'm just saying that I'm closer than I was a year ago. And I'm continually tracking my progress, not just in terms of the scores that I'm shooting, but my performance in practice, so that I can see if certain things are getting better, certain things aren't progressing the way they should be, which enables me to tweak my practice and make sure that overall, despite you know little ups and downs which you're going to have on any journey, but the general trend is that if here's where I started and here's scratch, I'm sort of gradually getting there, like this kind of fish heading towards this bit of wood in the sea because he wants to get to that bit of wood because it will make him feel good. <laughs> um, I had 100 subscribers, I've probably got about 40 left now, if that. The third, and you'll be pleased to hear, final reason is that me getting scratched isn't that big a deal, not in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to hit you with some stats here. The world record for the lowest ever round of golf is 55 on a par 71 course. A 16 under par on a 6,700 yard course. The oldest guy to ever get a hole in one was 103 years old. The youngest was four years old. Incidentally, having never had a hole in one, I'm not too keen on either of those people right now. This is the closest I've ever come, and Greg Norman was playing the group behind me. So it could have been the greatest moment of my life. Instead, it was just a big near miss. The world record for the most birdies in 12 hours is 93. I've done the maths, and that's a birdie every eight minutes for 12 hours. I mean, that's ridiculous. The speed golf world record, speed golf by the way, is where you have to sort of run between all your shots and your total score is a combination of how many minutes it took you to get around and how many shots you took. Um, but the world record for that, the guy shot 65 in under 45 minutes. Like, not in a buggy, carrying his clubs on foot. There are guys with one arm who regularly break 80. Outside of golf, we've climbed Everest, we've gone to the moon, not by flapping our arms. We've created electricity, we've mastered fire, we've split the atom, we've cloned sheep, we've created scotch eggs with runny yolks. All these amazing feats of human achievement and people think that it's impossible for me to get to scratch something that thousands of people have done before. Whatever your golf dream is, whether it's to get to scratch or get to single figures or break a hundred, get on the European Tour or win the Masters, don't assume that it's unrealistic and you're never going to get there just because a few people think so. All those things that I've mentioned, there would have been people who said, oh, that's never going to happen, that's impossible. And yet they have. Obviously, in these videos, I quite often include some kind of practice drill or skill test that I've been using in the hope that it might be useful for you. But I'm not going to do that this time. Instead, I just want you to spend a couple of minutes thinking about your golf dream. You might already know what it is, in which case that's great. But if not, just spend a minute or two thinking about what it might be. And think big. So if you're off 12, your target might be to get single figures. But what's your golf dream? To get to category one, to get to scratch, to get to plus four, to plan the challenge tour, qualify for the open, whatever it is, just write it down. Obviously, if your goal is a really big one, like winning the Masters or winning 19 majors, I can't guarantee that you're gonna get there. But what I will guarantee is that if you don't even know what it is, you're never gonna achieve it. Once you know what your golf dream is, if you feel like sharing it, put it in the comments below. I'd love to see what they are. Thanks again for watching the video. And I said at the start, Please subscribe if you haven't already. My next golf dream is to get to 200 subscribers. I'll be doing some more videos more regularly now. I enjoy making them. They help me keep positive about my golf, so they keep me moving towards my golf dream.